it is that time of year to go after some toothy critters like this one I got here in the net hook just came out luckily I had a net to get them but I am in the CCA tournament pickerel tournament it's three months long started November 1st and here I am Rants away from the house catching some decent chain pickerel this is probably one of my biggest by far this early going on in the tournament and I'm happy with that one yeah I'm gonna get that one measured up and uh, get a picture in get it submitted and get it from there but that's a good one and stay tuned I'm gonna show you some techniques and lures that I use to catch these tidal toothy critters that you can catch all winter long all fall like right now through the winter and that is a dandy that's going to be uh my biggest by far for the tournament so super stoked can't wait to get this one measured and uh submit it and we will go from there need your bump board need your badge like that gotta be on the uh long bump board here oh yeah there we go it's a 24 24 incher 24 incher beautiful fish take that she got a little blood on her should be okay stay tuned get her uh get her picture submitted and go from there if i don't lose my badge You can see from them flags, this wind had no, inten no intentions of me staying out here, so it's all good. Well, as Mother Nature would have it, she wasn't having it. So I'm heading back to the ramp, going to pop the kayak in the back of the truck, head up the road, and see you at the HQ. For the rest of this video show you some demonstration on lures and techniques and tackle all that good stuff so i'll see you back at the hq just in a few all right so here we are down here in the dungeon amped up headquarters and i'm going to go over some techniques some lures all that good stuff tackle things that i use techniques that i use for pickerel fishing in the fall early winter and throughout the winter um, so right now the water temperature uh, in this area is about 55 degrees or so give or take um, you have some warm days you have cold days you got cold nights for sure but um, right now I'd say on average uh, you're looking at like 50 to 55 degrees so these fish are actually chasing uh, a little bit more than they will once the water gets cold once the water cold gets cold they, they, even though they're a cold water species, they definitely slow down. They don't like to chase a whole lot uh, once that water temperature gets about 40 degrees or so. Um, one of my favorite lures to use this time of year, by far, um, is a paddle tail. And paddle tails, you know, come in a variety of sizes and colors. But, you know, I like to pair them up with a underspin. Um, when it's early on in the season like like right now an underspin seems to uh, attract a lot more with that vibration and as you can see here's one right here uh, with a willow blade and this is about a quarter to uh, actually this is about a half ounce this one's a little bit heavy um, and sometimes I'll use all the way up to a half ounce um, like this one here um, and I like to have just a, you know, a whole selection of jig head types with me. Anything from just a regular screw, uh, screw head with a, a blade like that for your swim baits. Hopefully you can see that okay. Lighting's pretty dim down here in the, in the headquarters, but that also has a, uh, a willow blade on, on it. And it's a weighted 
worm hook basically with the with the screw to screw your baits on so those work really really well i like anything from a three to a five inch for paddle tails and paddle tails again like i said different varieties different manufacturers all of them have um you know a different style to them but most of them you're looking at stuff like this where it's got a nice little paddle in there with some vibration to go along with that spinner and uh sometimes these natural colors like this one here is a sunfish um uh, from cabela's that is a uh five inch i believe or yeah something like that it's close to that but that's about as big as you want to throw for pickerel they they tend to eat um a lot of you know minnows shiners small bluegills stuff like that they're really not eating big fish now if you can fish really really slow baits yeah they will definitely eat you know an eight inch bait like you know like it's nothing they got pretty big mouths so um this is one that's very large here you know if you can see that one that's that's one that's basically bigger than most people would be throwing for pickerel but uh i tend to do really well early on in the season with these big baits and that's got a lot of thump a lot of a lot of flash with that that blade and this one's been beat to hell but um i throw straight braid no leaders and I'm, I'm i'm wondering if you guys can comment in this but i'm wondering if it matters because i got 40 pound braid on here you know and i definitely catch a lot more fish uh on lighter mono thin clear lines than i do with straight braid even though they really don't have time to sit there and study this thing because it's moving through the water pretty fast uh, at a reasonable rate let's put it that let's put it at that we just you know we throw it out we crank it um sometimes the fish are hanging near the bottom sometimes they're in mid column and sometimes they're near the surface when they're near the surface to me this time of year you can't beat a bustum bait a fluke bait like this one here that's been doctored up it's been a uh, you know a little bit of dye on that one but you know red i'm a big i'm a big fan of red and your baits for pickerel i don't know what it is i don't know if it's like a bull but it definitely works getting those fish angry and they will smack the crap out of these things i get you know sometimes I can get six or seven picker off of one bait off of these soft plastics and you know that's pretty good for anybody that knows pickerel they can tear up some stuff now I'm not saying that that happens all the time but you know if uh, you can get it out without ripping them with the teeth you can actually get a decent amount of fish off of one bait and uh, mid to top water right here with a just a, a worm hook either weighted or unweighted if you can get away with unweighted you can get some killer action on this if you rig it just like you would any other fluke just you know like a worm with that hook point coming out and just bedding out um the mill ponds i do real well with uh with bustums when i'm out here in the magathy the tidal rivers i love to throw these um just because i can cover a lot more water and I can make a lot more casts, get some longer casts with these, and uh, just you know work that shoreline real well. I like to work uh, between two to four feet of water this time of year. As it gets a little colder, I like to go a little bit deeper, um, say four to seven feet of water, and that's pretty much all I'm going to be fishing uh, the rest of the year. So that's uh, in a nutshell. That's what I'm doing. Um, you know I, I try to steer away from using treble hooks but if you can uh, if you can you know clip those hooks down or, or switch them out you know a jerk bait is is very good bait for uh, for this time of year um, this is a smaller one but you know this is uh, Uzuri, I believe but if you can go with rogues and you know stuff like that and rattle traps also just a killer bait for uh, look at this mess that's a heck of a mess you want to Come over and untangle this stuff for me. Yikes! But there's a bunch of rattle traps in there. It's all. Uh, I'm uh, cleaning out my tackle right now. I'm getting kind of geared towards pickerel fishing, and I got a whole mess of, you know, uh, 
soft plastics here that I'm going in. I just make a little box and I put it together. Here's a Boston Bates box. Basically, it's just all uh, five inch to, you know, flukes to throw in it. it. To me, it's like one of the best baits you could possibly use. Between that, and like I said, your your paddle tails, you know, it's it's all you really need. You don't need a whole lot. I mean, spinners work great. If you can use a spinner bait or inline spinners, definitely, uh, you know, early in the season and then back in the spring when they're chasing a little bit more. But um, to me, I think you can't go wrong with a underspin and paddle tail or a busting bait fluke or any other style flukes. We we like to plug bustums because they're great guys and they make great lures and they definitely catch fish. So get out there and catch you some pickerel. It's This is the time of year, man. This is fun. You know, you put away the, the other stuff and then you got the panfish, you know, that's coming up soon. So get you some stingers. Caught plenty of pickerel and stingers as well, you know, on their bobber and a uh, little, you know, 64, 64 ounce jig head on that. Caught plenty of pickerel doing that. Um, so get out there. Get signed up. You've got plenty of time right now. CCA of Maryland online pickerel tournament. Um, it's going on from now through the winter. And uh, just, you know, these guys put on a great tournament for um, conservation efforts to where they're logging your catches of, you know, and trying to keep track of how well these pickerel do are doing, uh, especially here in the uh, tidal rivers such as the magazine I'm fishing, the Severn River, all these other rivers a lot of people are fishing, but get out there, sign up, sign up. You got plenty of time. It, it's, it, like I said, it's all winter long. So the winter won't happen until, you know, in February, but it's November, currently in third place. My numbers definitely won't stand for, for uh, top 10 where I'm at right now, but you know, it's fun. It's having a good time out there in the winter time, chasing pickerel. Uh, as far as tackle, or I should say rod and reels, um, I like to use a, a heavier setup. Uh, I'm medium to medium heavy uh, bait caster. I like a six, to, six and a half foot medium heavy with a fast action tip. Same applies for um, my spinning rods. I use a six and a half to seven foot medium heavy. Um, and, I, and I do throw braid, so here's a uh, you know, KBD quantum rod with a black and gold dial, Old Faithful. Um, something with a, some, some cranking power with a good drag. And you know, you want to, you don't want to horse the fish in, but you don't want to give them a whole lot of time because they're, they're good at escaping. So get them cranked in, have a net on your boat, or if you're fishing from shore, crank them in, get them in, weigh them up or measure them up if you're in the tournament. Take a quick picture, submit it. Use your little badge, like uh, I have one here somewhere. It kind of escaped me, but anyway, that's pickerel fishing. That's what you should be uh, out there targeting right now. So it's a good time to be catching them. We'll see you out there on the water. Drink responsibly. Severn River Angler, my man. All right, gang, as you can see, that's the mouth of Grace Creek. It's Tidal Creek that dumps right into the Magothy River, which dumps into the Chesapeake Bay. So, as with most creeks, um, if you get close to the mouth of the, these creeks and you find the very first bay, um, and what I mean by a bay is just a shallow flat, you know, that has, uh, has some grass, has some cover, you have you have that with like three to four feet of water where you have like a big circular uh, you know area you'll find some pickerel there almost every time I mean from the you know Potomac Patuxent the you know Patapsco all the feeder creeks off of these rivers Severn the Magothy even on the uh, the western I mean the eastern shore I should say all the rivers that they touch the bay as long as the salinity is not very very high now right now the, the salinity in this creek is it's still pretty high I'm I'm still finding finding uh 
jellyfish, sea nettles, you know, and uh, there's there's still a few crabs around, but not many. It's you know it's the middle of November now, so um, the crabs are starting to move out and go you know burying down deep into their their want, uh, winter holes. But you know there's still some cormorants working. There's one out there in the distance. There I'm still seeing some blue herons. The uh, the ospreys are long gone. Flew south down to the Carolinas and and, and even further south. But you know it's uh, it's not winter. It's still fall. But this is the perfect time to go out and catch a number of uh, of chain pickerel uh, before the winter sets in, which you know it's only a couple weeks away, and this this is likely to be frozen uh, by some point in December or January. So then I'll I'll switch my gears over to fishing in the tidal ponds and stuff like that, or even ice fish if we get enough ice. But um, for the most part though i mean these these tidal creeks if you it, like i said if you could find uh shallow bays these fish love shallow water three to four foot um with grass and even shallower if you could find two foot of water and um there's a lot of cover for them you'll catch them but you know they definitely need that cover uh be it you know weed or wood but you know you'll find these fish um, as you can see, my, my, my kayak is still bare bones, um, minus some leaves and, you know, crap. But, uh, I have no depth finder. I know this creek pretty well. I, I fish it, you know, I've been here for, uh, about 15 years now. So I've, I've learned the creek pretty well and learned the, the depths of it. But for the most part, I know that like, this is one of the, the better areas because like I said, that is the mouth of, uh, Gray's Creek and you can hit all these black hole, you know, Sillery Bay up up north going towards Gibson Island um, I don't know Severn River all that well I haven't really fished it much but I do know that it's very similar to the Magathy and from what I saw last year and from what I'm seeing earlier on in this year's um, that the head of uh, these creeks are going to be pretty dominant for for this tournament um, and pickerel come in in different classes you know it seems like almost like the year class like 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 you have with striped bass rockfish um it's it's like if you're catching 20 inch fish last year and you're catching a you know a bunch of average fish about 20 to 22 inches chances are you're going to come here this year and catch you know 20 to 22 to even 24 inches so these fish are grow you know a couple inches a year and you know it's the chesapeake bay so there's no shortage of uh you know bait fish be it mummy chugs or for these uh pickerel you know small sunfish or um bay anchovies whatever they can get shiners but it's there's a lot of bait out here these fish do grow fairly large uh but once they reach about 22 to 23 inches or so then they start getting fat you know and, and they kind of slow down on the uh on the length um, and I noticed a lot in a difference in tidal fish as opposed to, uh, you know, like the mill ponds and such is that they, they tend to, uh, they get fatter quicker in the mill ponds than they do in, in tidal water. And they seem to get longer in tidal water before they start getting fatter. So that being said, I think you can catch a lot of, uh, heavier fish right now in places like johnson's pond and you know there's ponds down in salisbury and some of the mill ponds and tuckahoe and unicorn and and such but you know not the spot burn but everybody that's been fishing for pickerel kind of knows a lot of these spots and uh you know it, it's it's not hard to go out and find the fish it's kind of hard to find a steady balance of big fish and there's some guys in this tournament that can show you um and I've only been doing this tournament for, you know, four or five years. And it's a lot of fun. But I've definitely seen, uh, you know, some of the top names out there that, you know, that continue to put big fish in the boat. And they know the tricks. And I'm I'm, I'm trying to learn from them, you know, to be honest with you. I, I take my notepad out and put it in my mental notebook. But there's definitely... Uh, some homework to be done you know learn from your learn from your fellow anglers learn from those guys that are experienced and been doing it and uh and also do your own 
you know recon and go out there and and get out and experiment and you know learn what you're doing out there so this is a this is a lot of fun you know it's not it's not about trying you know to catch 30 inch fish every every time you come out it's if you can learn a little bit each time you come out then that makes it all worthwhile and to me that's part of the what makes this tournament fun is is uh number one the class of guys that, and gals that you're up against and um knowing that you know every year is different and you know this year i think uh i think the title portion of the chesapeake and these creeks like i'm fishing today are going to prove uh you know a little bit a little bit more um how can i say it's gonna it's not gonna be a runaway for those guys that were fishing the reservoirs in baltimore like they were a couple years ago or fishing uh the tidal ponds or the uh the, the ponds down south on the eastern shore you know or off the patuxent you know these these rivers i think this year and the next couple years are going to show some very big fish and i i think uh you know like i said the bodkin you know bodkin's going to be one of those um creeks that's going to be good anything off of the patapsco i think is going to have some really big pickerel this year um and i think uh, a couple other people would agree with that um so i'm going to get out here i'm going to make a few more casts i'm throwing swim baits and like i mentioned earlier some of these uh the lures that i like to use is definitely swim baits this time of year with the underspin uh and about you know three eighths up to a half ounce and you know three to three to five inches depending on the bait fish that they're uh they're chasing on if i'm trying to catch a bigger fish obviously i'm gonna throw a lot of the bigger baits and so far the, the biggest fish that i've gotten was uh i i believe i missed that fish like two minutes earlier on a five five and a half inch bait and i switched down to a three and a half inch and he nailed it and i caught it so um i just hope to uh i hope i'm hoping that's not even one of my fish that i have to register to be honest for my top three but um it's still fun you know currently in third place i'm gonna shoot for first but if i finish in the top 10 i'm happy and uh the more i learn the better so stay with me let's see if i can get a fish or two two back to back little guys still fun BLS, baby.